Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the lessons learned from beating stage four cancer from this particular book, How to Starve Cancer Without Starving Yourself by Jane McLellan. This is going to be an interesting topic for you, even if you are early stage cancer, looking to prevent a recurrence, or maybe you have stage four cancer and conventional medicine doesn't seem to be working or isn't working optimally, and you're looking for a more integrative approach. If you're new here, my name is Trefina Sofian, and in this channel, we talk about how we can lead our mind, body, and spirit back into recovery from cancer so we can live our best life. So if you're interested in this topic, go ahead and subscribe today and hit that notification bell. One of the downsides of her book, some readers have commented that there was a lot of scientific jargon that they just really could not understand and therefore didn't really get much out of her book. And so in this video, I'm going to be distilling five key powerful ideas. The first lesson that I want to share with you from this book is that to achieve lasting remission, you need to target cancer stem cells. The reason being is that cancer stem cells is responsible for drug resistance. So for example, when you see chemotherapy not working again, that is drug resistance. And cancer stem cells are also responsible for the spread of disease. So that is the reason why we see metastatic disease um, months, years later on down the track when the cancer patient has achieved remission. So when you study patients that have been diagnosed with cancer and you look at their tumor, there is actually two different populations of cancer cells. The first population is the fast growing cancer cells that is susceptible to conventional medicine such as chemotherapy. The second population of cells are the cancer stem cells and these are usually dormant, they don't divide rapidly and usually they are left behind after finishing chemotherapy. And so this is one of the big gaps, the big deficiency of conventional medicine because they don't effectively target and eradicate these stem cells. The second lesson is that cancer is highly, highly adaptable. She explains this difference between targeting the genes versus the metabolism of cancer cells as comparing roads with the train system. Now imagine cancer was a burglar that was trying to run away. If it uses the road or street system for its getaway, there is a high chance that it can successfully escape. And that's because the roads have highways, freeways, back roads, pathways, there are essentially an infinite number of routes that the burglar can take. Many of the drug development today is targeting specific genes. And she says that this is futile because cancer can have so many mutations which can create an infinite number of rerouting of the pathways that have been blocked by that particular treatment. Compare that to the train line system. There is a smaller number of escape routes that the burglar can get away. Which leads me to lesson number three, which is to kill cancer by starving it to death. Here is a simplistic diagram of how Jane was able to do this. And she introduces us to this idea called the cancer starving triangle. Because when you think about it, there are really only three fuel sources that a cell can use to create energy. The first is carbohydrates, the second is proteins, and the third is fats. The theory is that if we can completely block all three fuel supply, we can effectively starve cancer to death. You get an understanding of Jane's personality because she spent countless hours hundreds of hours probably scouring past research papers and journal to get journal articles and finally she was able to piece together a combination of supplements and off-label drugs that have a history of low toxicity and she was able to starve her particular cancer using these combinations.
So let's get into the details of exactly what supplements and over-the-counter drugs that Jane used. On the protein pathway, she uses dipyrimidol, a class of drugs called antiplatelets that are used for stroke victims. But its mechanism of action is really to block the nucleosides, the building blocks of proteins. On the carbohydrate side, she uses a drug called metformin, commonly used for diabetic patients, and a supplement called berberine, and they work to decrease blood glucose levels. On the fat side, she uses a statin drug, uh, which is a drug commonly used for lowering cholesterol levels. What's important to realize is that the cancer starving triangle is oversimplified. And if we look at it more closely and in more detail, what you'll notice is that within one fuel line, there are multiple pathways. So for example, in the carbohydrate fuel line, there are four or five different pathways, same for the glutamine pathway or the protein pathway, and also the fat pathway. So if you want to successfully stop the metabolism of these cancer stem cells, it's important that you block multiple pathways even within the same fuel line. The good news is that a number of supplements and off-label drugs that she has spoken about actually targets multiple pathways and multiple fuel lines. The fifth lesson is that there are several distinct steps to cancer development and growth. And this is where most people tune out and they get very, very overwhelmed. Now they have to block several different pathways and also several different steps of cancer growth and development. The sixth lesson is that to effectively block multiple pathways and multiple steps, you need to actually use multiple modalities. There are four main modalities that Jane mentions, diet, exercise, off-label drugs, and supplements. So I hope that was useful to you and gave you a great insight into how to cure stage four cancer.